Hi, John Bozier here, Great South Bay Bait and Tackle. Today we're going to have a seminar for Lindenhurst uh, High School Fishing Club, and today's guest speaker will be Billy the Greek, um, and Mike McGuire is the teacher. Uh, we're expecting to have 18 kids come in today. Um, I would say half are girls, which is always good to have. Always like to have young ladies uh, join our uh, little sport that we have here. Um, uh, working on the camera today, doing me a large favor, Captain Joey Leggio from Oceanside with his beautiful wife, Jen. And uh, we're going to see how it goes. And uh, today we'll be hoping first of many seminars that we'll have in here. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. All right, guys. For everyone who don't know me, my name is Bill Agakis, but everybody calls me the Greek. Because I'm Greek. <laughs> <laughs> That's this, horrible, right? Hey, wait a minute. Is this blue grid going away? It doesn't matter. Oh, we want to get your whole pretty face on. So because you're always going to, the first thing we're going to discuss for a minute is big striped bass. Then we'll get on to other fish because I can see everyone probably fishes for everything. Yeah. But I catch real big striped bass. And I, I'm talking about fishing a 50 to 60 pound class. Everybody here can catch one if you listen sooner or later. You ought to catch a really big bass. These fish are geared by the moon and the tide. And so your job as a fisherman, does anyone know what your first job as a fisherman is? No tide. That's part of it, but your first job is to I find some fish. <laughs> find the fish. Job number one of a good fisherman is to find a fish. And how do we go about finding a fish? The best thing you can do if you don't know your fish is read about its habits. What does this fish like? How does it live? Because fish, all they do that we need to know is eat. We need to know where they eat and what they eat. And then you can catch them. So the rest of it, you know, you need to know, but it doesn't matter because if they're sleeping, you can't catch them. You only catch them when you're eating. So what do they eat? Big striped bass eat big bait. So you need big bait to catch a big fish. With the most That's how you find these fish. So when you go out searching for fish, there's signs. Sometimes it's very visible, like when the fish are feeding on bait on the surface, you can see it. But if that's not the case, how would you know there's even fish there? So for a beginning standpoint, how do you find fish? Because water pretty much looks all the same, right? When you look at the water, can you tell the difference? Do you know where it's deep, where it's shallow, where there's currents? That's very hard. You have to learn all that. So that, that's part of being a really good fisherman. That's part of finding your fish. And you can find that out because you guys have tremendous access today to knowledge. It's all online. So when you look at water, when I look at water, I no longer look and just say, gee, that's water. I don't want to know where the fish are. I want to know where the fish aren't. That's the right way to fish. Because most of the water has nothing in it. You want to know where the fish actually are. So striped bass are structure-oriented fish. So if they were in this room, they wouldn't be on the flat, open part of the bottom because that's not what they like. They'd be cruising around here, waiting for something. So when a, when a fish comes by, they can ambush them, they can catch them. So that's what you need to know as a fisherman. And the, and the faster you learn that, the more fish you catch. So how, how do you do that? Looking at water, you can't see that unless you start to learn the signs. So this is getting a little involved for you, but still, as, as you fish and you look at the water, you'll realize that deep water doesn't move as much on the surface <laughs> as it's deep. The shallow water has more ripples, it has more action, so then you can tell the difference from the shallow to deep. And you want to be on edges of shallow to deep, currents. Anyone know the difference between the tide and the current? And we're all salt water fishing. Mike, do you know the difference? Let's hear it. Tide is the time when the water is highest and lowest. The current is when it's coming in, right? You can have an incoming, which they call flood, and you can have an outgoing, which they call ebb. That's pretty good. And that's good. the current, good. which is, if you look at the paper, guys, the time of the tide, it's going to be off by a couple hours because of the current. It takes a long time for all that water to come in, and okay, a long I'm time for all the water to come The tide is the vertical rise and fall of water. The current is the horizontal movement of it. And that's what matters. The current matters the most. Because predators, when the water moves hard, it's easier for them to catch their prey. That's how they're designed. All fish are designed to catch their prey. And the more the water moves, the easier it is. So for striped bass and big striped bass, the harder the water moves, the better. Because they're very big and they can stay in a strong current. And as the little fish can't deal with the current, it's kind of like, you know, if you had a 50-mile-an-hour wind outside and a little two-year-old get blown down the street and someone <laughs> big and fat could just catch them. 
<laughs> so that's kind of, when, when you think of big fish, that's what you got to think of. Lazy and big. They're not chasing. If I threw a bunch of quarters on the floor and you all ran for them, I wouldn't run for one of them. I'd wait till you were done and I'd pick up the pieces. And that's how you got to think about bigger fish. And all fish are that way. The bigger they are, the lazier they are. That's how they get big, by the way. And they get very efficient. How many people here fluke fish? Oh, a lot of fluke fishermen. How many fish for fluke off the dock? Anybody? Is everybody boat fishing? Everybody's pretty much boat fishing? You fish off a dock? Um, yeah, sir. Okay. Do you fish bait? Does everyone fish bait? Or we fish bucktails? Bait. Okay. Uh, as time goes by, you should come in here because John makes bucktails. Bucktail fishing outfishes bait fishing 10 to 1 when you get good at it. And I was telling a couple of kids here before, I told my daughters when they were young, Laura, my oldest daughter, could catch fluke so fast it was amazing with a bucktail and with a teaser above it. And that, that's a real art form, and that's a lot of fun to do because it's action. In other words, instead of dragging the bait along, waiting for something to bite it, you're going like this, and they yank it out of your hand. It's like saying, bends a rod right down. So that's a lot of fun. And when you're in the bay, a lot of you guys fish the bay in the boat. Striped bass coming into like late May all the way through the summer, they're on every single marsh out here. Every single marsh. If you get a little popping plug, do we have a popping plug? That, Joey, right behind it. That's a big pop, popping plug, but you just need a little one. Right on the counter, straight ahead of you. Okay, here we go. This is a popping plug, and the reason it is, it has no lip, so it doesn't swim. It's designed to splash. It looks like a little wounded bait fish. Get one of these half as big as this, and on any marsh, when you're out in a boat, cast up into the marshes and just pop it back. If there's bluefish or if there's bass, you'll aggressively see them smash the lure, hit it, they smack it out of the water with their tail. That's a lot of fun. This is, this is an exciting lure to fish if you want to have a good time. So anybody, when you're out on a boat, you should have a couple of these with you. Everybody should. You, should have one of, any, you got your own tackle equipment, most of you? You have your own tackle box and lures and stuff? Okay. So always carry a couple of popping blows on the boat because there's always bass and bluefish on the marshes. Always. And just go from marsh to marsh and just cast. And that's a lot of fun. And who wants to catch a big fluke? Nobody. I can't believe it. Joey wants to catch a big fluke. Well, you do right here. This young lady right here is All right. Fluke. Listen. The best way to, the, the worst way to catch a big fluke is spearing and squid. That's just the way to catch fluke, and that's the way everybody fishes, because that's the easiest way. It's available, and that's fun. But if you want to catch a really big fluke, Catch it. There's two ways to do it. You can fish live bait, but then you got to get live bait, so that's all to do. But the best way is a big strip of fish bait. Any fish. If you catch a big sea rock and another fluke, a sand shark, cut a strip off between 6, 8, 10, 12 inches long, make it in a little pennant shape, and, and, and lift it as you go like this through the bay. And if there's anything big, you're going to catch it. You might even get a big weak fish or a big blue fish. So that's a lot of fun. Mike, do you teach all these kids how to tie knots? I, yeah, we've done it. What's I got to do it again. Knot? I taught him some of the basic knots, like, okay. you know, proof clinch, polymer. Okay. You know, I did, I did a couple. Who remembers? Steven, you remember? Um, I taught him how to do, like, drop a loops, how to snell hooks, okay. but Listen, I got to do it again. The knot is the only thing between you and the fish that matters the most, because if you don't tie a good knot, then you lose your big fish. And everybody loses their big fish because their knots are no good. So you should practice tying knots over everything else you do to your fish. Knots are number one. They have to be tied good, tight. They should be wet before you tighten them down so they don't, there's no abrasion when you tighten them. This, the two best knots are polymer knot and a trilene knot where you go back through. And you can show them that in your class. So the polymer knot's my favorite because it's doubled, it's locked, and it never breaks. And if you tie a knot that doesn't break, you don't lose your fish. Everybody here fish spinning gear? You know what spinning reel is? Get a spinning reel out of there, Joey. There's two types of reels we use. There's conventional and there's spinning. Most, well, everybody uses spinning today. I use conventional. This is a spinning reel. Here, yeah, pass it on. Up. This is this is a spinning reel. Everybody has this style with a bail open. You turn the handle, it closes. The other type is conventional. Now, just hand me a little red one over here, Joey. Right on the corner. This is the easiest reel to use for beginners and intermediates. 
But sometimes, depending on how you fish, like if you were fluke fishing with a bucktail, this is a much better reel to use. Because you can, you can hold the rod, you can hold the hand, you can jig it, you can do a lot more with this, but it's harder to use because the line will backlash on you if you're not used to it. And this is a little, little higher level for your kids, but as you get better and better, more and more you'll start to switch to conventional if you start to catch fish. And, and the key to this is to catch fish. There's that, you want to always fish like the guy next to you, right? You want to make him say, gee, he ain't that good at this one. Mm -hmm. So if you, as, as, you, as you learn about fishing, presentation is the key to catching fish. So he lives in a natural world. All fish live in a world where they see the same thing every day. They know what it is. So when this swims like this and it doesn't look real, they don't take it. Same thing with the bait on a hook. If it spins, they never seen it spin. They never seen a clam jump. So all this stuff, you got you got to get your your bait to look real. If you're not sure how that works, when you're in a boat, put it down in the water and watch it. It should do this. If it does this, you're not catching a thing. So don't clump your bait on. It should flow out smoothly. All bait should flow out smoothly and should swim. So your job, always think when you're fishing that. If I were a fish, I want to eat something that looks real and natural and slow because fish are lazy. The slower, the better. Everything slow is easy to catch, right? If, you, if you're hungry and starving to death and you keep chasing stuff, you'll die because you'll use more energy than you take in. So big fish and even small fish, it's a whole lot easier catching this when it swims like this and pops a little than if you're doing 100 miles an hour. So slow everything down. Everything is nice and slow and easy. Lift it up and you'll catch a lot more fish. Anybody got any questions they want in particular about fishing? But well, we don't know yet. Come on. You're just listening. All right. What about bluefish? You guys catch bluefish? You catch bluefish, you catch bluefish. You catch bluefish. All right, you got to be careful with bluefish. How come? Teeth. They got yep. teeth. They bite. Whenever you catch fish with teeth, do you release all your fish? No. Do we yeah, keep the most of fish. them? Okay. With bluefish, you got to be real careful with their teeth. So if you got a bluefish, let someone else take them off if you don't know, because they, they definitely get some stitches in you. All right, let's get back to some fluke fishing in the bay. Uh, who's fishing off the dock? Who said they were fishing off the dock? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes? Fluke like moving bait. So if you let it sit, that's not good. You always need to move it. And move it slow. If you fish off a dock, and I see a lot of you don't, which is kind of amazing to me. But if you fish off a dock, cast out, and if you use bait, reel it in slow. If you use, you can use little jigs and lures, they catch fluke too. But if you, you can reel in slow from the boat, you don't need to do that. You just need to be vertical. If you're bucktailing from a boat, the more vertical the line is, the more fish you catch. As the boat drifts and the line gets further and further, reel it back in and start over. Because you want to be straight up and down with a bucktail. With bait, you can go a little further out. <laughs> Alright, who wants to catch striped bass? Everybody wants to catch striped bass. Alright, small bass are easy to catch. There's lots of them in the bay, there's lots of them on the beach. The best way to catch small bass if you're not lure fishing is clam chum. Anybody hear clam chum? There's one. Okay, everyone will have it. You can catch a lot of fish clam chum. And clam chum is a lot of fun, but the key to clam chum to catch more fish is to get there before the tide moves. And that's very important, because once the tide starts to move, the bass come into the tide, you need to feed the clam chum out. Some guys fish with a, with a clam pot, some guys hand chum it in the water. Some people put, on my boat I used to put a little meat grinder off the back of the boat that I mounted, and I pour the chum and you just turn it every, every 10, 15 seconds, and just leave a long slick of chum with no pieces, and everything that has a hook in it, is a, every piece of bait has a hook in it, the rest is just a bunch of slop, and they smell that. They swim up into the tide and they grab the bait. If you keep that going and get there as soon as the tide starts, you, you can really beat the fish up. I mean, catch a lot, a lot of fish. And I mean a lot, like 30, 50, 60 fish on a tide with no problem at all if you clam jump. So, and, and this bay out here is, is absolutely fantastic for clam jumping. You can clam jump all the way back here. You can clam jump in the state boat channel all the way over by the lighthouse. You can clam jump by the inlet. There's just a ton of bass here. But for the most part, clam chumming, you catch fish in the 5 to 20 pound class. That's predominantly the size of fish you catch. And, and for a lot of you guys, 20 pound bass is a huge fish. But, so that's pretty good, and it's easy to catch them. If you want to step it up to bigger fish, then you can use bunker. You know what bunker are? Mm -hmm. Bunker's a bait fish about this big. You can, if you get fresh bunker, you can cut them into pieces, three or four pieces, and chum with that. 
They'll catch bigger bass and real big bass that time. You can catch on, on them. And then you really got to tie your knots good and make sure you're sure. The hooks are real sharp, too. So, who, let's see. What else should we go over now? Want to go over weak fish? We don't have any weak fish here anymore, huh? Well, actually, weak fish you can catch. If you're out there fluke fishing, and if you, do you know what a weak fish is? Does everyone know what a weak fish is? Weak fish is actually a gorgeous fish. It's a sea trout. It looks like a big freshwater trout. They're, they're beautiful purple that runs through the top and gold, and, and they're shaped like a freshwater trout. Beautiful looking fish. And these bays used to be filled with them, and, and every once in a while they come and they go, but they're cycle fish. They, they show up for years, and then they disappear for years, and then they come back. If you're in the bay fluke fishing, if you tie a hook four feet up when you, well, from your fluke rig, with a, a five foot leader with a single strip of like a strip of squid, if there's weak fish, you'll catch them on that, and that's how you can find out. So every once in a while, when you're out there, you should drag some some squid through the bay and see if you can get any of these these weak fish because they're gorgeous <coughs> fish and they're good eating. A lot of people like to eat weak fish. And we should find. I think this year we should actually have some because they started to show up a little last year. I was down on the well with Doc last year before it got destroyed, and uh, it was snapper season, so I'm going to say it was probably in early September. And uh, my daughter called me to go down there. They couldn't catch them, and they was we were catching one weak fish after another. And they were they were small. They were about maybe 12 inches, but it was just loaded with them. How many guys snap a fish? Everyone snap a fishes? How do you fish? How do you fish with snappers? Mm, a spinner rod. Spearing? Yeah. All right. If you want to catch 10 times more snappers, there's, there's two ways to do it. Take the barber off altogether. If you're not going to use lures, take the barber off. Take a small hook and put a little live killie or a little piece of spearing and let it sink. If it sinks like this, you'll kill them. It'll weigh out fish, the barber float, little split shot. Way out fish it because that's natural presentation. If you go down to the dock on those, on those snapper tournaments, you'll catch 10 fish to everybody's one that way. And I mean it, 10 to 1. Because the bait's got to float nice and easy like that. No weight, no float, just cast it out. And you don't have to cast ball for me to use fun. They're all over the place. And that's a lot of fun because part of fishing, if you don't catch nothing, it gets boring very quickly. You know, if you're out there for like an hour, it's like, what the hell am I doing here? I should have left half an hour ago. You know, the, the, the biggest problem with, with most people that fish is they don't catch fish. So it, but it's natural presentation. All those little tiny details makes you catch more fish than the guy next to you. And it's a lot more fun when you catch them when you don't. Because otherwise it's sort of like, duh. It's a lighter line, little hooks. Just let it float down, especially with the snappers and the little weak fish and stuff like that. There's so many little creatures in this bay. Anybody get up to see the sunrise, or, or you, you don't get up there? All right. Part of, part of being, when I fish, one of, to me, getting up in the morning and watching the sun come up every day in my life is one of the most fantastic things you'll ever see, and watching it set every night. Because most people never see the sunrise. You know, you never see it. It, it really is impressive. I like to fish before dark before the sun comes up until just after. Most of the time, when I'm seriously bass fishing, I'm home by 7 in the morning. I go at like 3.30, 4, you can't do that yet. But I can. But now, sometimes these big bunker schools in the ocean, if you get out, if you got a boat, or your parents got a boat, or someone's got a boat, and you get out in the ocean on these big bunker schools, you can get a huge bass. There's some big fish coming up out of them. But most of you guys, pretty much, I guess, are going to fish in the bay here. So you'll have a good time with the fluke. You can catch a ton of fish with the clam jump. Is that, do you guys clam chum? Most of you don't? You should. Well, clam chum is different. Clam chum is when, they used to make it in the, in the factories when they would make clams, they would take out the good part of the clam and throw the rest away. And then we realized from, this started years ago in Point Lookout, that the, the doxy clam would do that and they'd throw all the clams in the water through the grinders and there was eight million bass sitting there eating them and no one knew it until some guy figured out like, whoa, look at all these bass. So the clam chum is, it's just all ground up stuff and it's very snotty and slimy and you probably won't like it, but you, know, it's, it's, but you throw it in and the bass love it. Bass love that stuff. And you can really, you can go anywhere and catch bass. If there's a current movement, anchor your boat and you can catch bass that way. And if you don't know how to do something, just stop in here. John will tell you, Mike will tell you, Mr. McGuire will tell you. And I'll be in and out, I'm always in and out here so you can always ask questions. But you guys have tremendous access to the, to the internet, so you need to go on and learn about water. Learn how to read water and why the current moves and the structure. It sounds like a lot, but when you're out on the water and you fish, as you figure it out, you catch more fish, which makes the fishing very exciting. Because to not catch is just, I mean, to go out fishing is okay, but much better if you go out and catch fish.
And the more, the more fish you catch, the more fun it is. And you'll get better and better at that. Any questions? So now, clam chum guys, right? Billy, do you, do you recommend braided line with no weight, just free float? Or there's, there's a couple of ways to clam chum. The right way to clam chum is to let the tide take the lure, take the bait, and to go out. When you clam chum, you're going to take a big bucket of clam chum, and, and you either squeeze it or you put a, a pot on the bottom, or you grind it like I told you. And it makes a slick that can go a couple of hundred yards. And the fish come swimming up looking for where it started because they know that it, up tide it's got to start somewhere. And, and they'll be right behind the boat. And the right way is to take the line and feed it out with nothing on it. As the tide moves harder, though, adding a small, they sell little split shots of rubber cores, add one on, and you'll see that they'll yank the rod right out of your hand when you do that. You get three or four pulls, it's like, and you got the fish. And it's that easy. It's that easy to catch them. You know, but clam chum is the, the best way to catch small fish. There's no better way. Billy, tell them about the, uh, the gum wrapper trick. When you get a bait and you miss it, you put the gum wrapper, reel it in, and you send oh, it right back to the same spot. They're probably not up to that level yet. <laughs> Years ago when we used to fish, because we fished for money, and when you fish for money, you got to get good or get a job. So we didn't want to work. We'd rather catch fish. When you catch a fish, when the fish come into the tide, as the tide starts to move, they're usually pretty far behind the boat. So what we would do is I would take, you could take a gum wrapper or a, or a little piece of, or like this, and as soon as you hook the fish, you'd stick it here, and then you'd reel. And then the next time, you would let the line out. You know when you got to the piece of cardboard you put in, you're ready for another fish just about then you got another one and then they would start moving closer until you, you figured it all out but that's a good and that's a good way to figure where your fish are but fishing fishing's a lot of fun and it's an enjoyable thing to do I don't eat fish that's why I'm good at it but <laughs> <laughs> and I let most, for the people that let your fish go that's a good point too if you're gonna let your fish go which I let 99 percent of my fish go I have the old Indian belief I, I only kill some if I'm gonna eat it and I don't like fish so I don't really keep too much unless, like, my mother wants one or something. But if you're going to let them go, they got to be let go in good shape. Like, if, if you're holding your fish and you're taking 30 pitches and you're stepping on it to pull the hook out, he's probably going to die. You know, if you want him alive, either release him right in the water. Like, a lot of big bass I catch, I don't pull them out of the water at all. I run right to the side of the boat, I unhook them, and I let them go. And if you're serious, you use circle hooks because they don't do as much damage. They hook every fish in the mouth so you can let them go nicely. And a circle hook's a little different hook, and you'll learn about that as you go on. But when you take a fish and you got him in the boat, and, and especially like a striped bass because he has no teeth, you can hold him by the side of the boat and swim him, and he'll just take off on his own when he's okay, which is in a couple of seconds. If they're small fish, just throw them in the air. When they hit the water, they swim. And it's simple as that. But if you fish, the more you handle them, the more damage you do. They're not meant to be out of the water long. So just don't... You know, don't squeeze them, hang because the slime coat on a fish is what protects its body, and if you get through that, then it can get infections. You might let them go alive, but two or three days, he might get an infection and die. So if you're going to release them, just be careful with them. You know, they're, they're a living animal. They're not, you know, they're not your dog, so you can't beat them up that much. <laughs> All right, so where do we want to go from here? Come on. That's All the way, guys. No questions? Johnny? I think it was wonderful. I had really enjoyed that one. All right, I think we're okay with that. So, pay attention to detail. Natural presentation, very important. Very important how that goes through. And go online and learn water and tide. You'll see. When you look up the, all the magazines online, the, the, the Channel 61 News every day will tell you the high tide. That is not the current speed. That's just where the water is the highest. You, when you, what you should do is you write it down, like the high tide is at 9 o'clock, you'll realize that if you're fishing over here, it's actually three hours later. So it's going to be 1 o'clock or 12 o'clock, depending on where you are. So when you learn that, and fish feed by tide. Our tides here are predominantly outgoing. You'll catch more fish here on the outgoing tide than any other tide most of the time. So when you go fishing out here, look up the tide, and you want it to be going out. So if it says high at 9, that, that means that's as high as the water is going to get, then it's going to turn to go out. So that's when you want to fish, the outgoing tide, not the incoming tide. And you'll catch more fish. The fish get very, very aggressive on the outgoing tides, especially striped bass. They like that tide. 
So good luck. Tell us how you do, and if you get a fish, bring them on in. We'll wave them up and take a picture. Thank you so much. Bro. My name is Mike McGuire. I'm a science teacher from Lindenhurst High School. I run the Lindenhurst Saltwater Anglers. It's a saltwater fishing club. It is a eclectic group. We have ninth graders through twelfth graders. We have boys. We have girls. We have experienced fishermen. We have novice and beginners. And one of my goals when I started this club six years ago was education, teach the kids about all the different species of fish in Long Island waterways how to catch them, how to tie rigs, how to tie knots, how to rig their rods, how to maintain their rods. And we do at least one, sometimes two trips a year. It is a little expensive. We've done beach cleanups. We've had guest speakers like we had today. And we've even had where I have brought in fish that I caught at a fillet table and went over how to fillet, how to gut fish. I showed the kids a couple weeks ago how to cut squid strips for fluke fishing because that's coming up in a couple weeks. And the kids really enjoy it. It's an after-school club, and we were so gracious to get approval to leave the building today the last couple of periods. And we're at Great South Bay Bait and Tackle. The kids are having a blast. And I hope this really gets them as much as me excited about starting to fish in the next couple of weeks.